Hey folks, thanks for joining us for another edition of the Food for the Heart and Nourishment for the Soul Sabbath School Lesson Series. This week, our introduction in part comes from the Sabbath afternoon section of Sabbath School Lesson number six, Laying Up Treasure in Heaven. Our memory verse comes from Mark 8, 36 and 37 of the New King James Version. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Jesus gave us the world's best investment strategy when he said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Jesus concludes his investment strategy by saying, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In other words, show me what you spend your money on, and I will show you where your heart is. Because wherever you put your money, your heart is sure to follow if it's not there already. Do you want a heart for the kingdom of God? If so, then put your money where it will reap eternal rewards. Put your time and your money and prayer into God's work. If you do, you will soon become even more interested in that work and your heart will follow as well. This week, we will review texts and illustrations that show us how to store up treasures in heaven and ultimately reap an eternal reward now let's get our Bibles out and study this lesson together. Welcome back. Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to this week's lesson number six, Laying Up Treasure in Heaven. Today is Friday, February 3, 2023, here in Hampstead, Maryland, where it is 17 degrees, with wind up to 21 miles per hour under a cloud cover. Uh, the good news is, starting on Sunday, temperatures near 50 degrees is forecasted through till next Friday. I want to thank you for joining us this week. It's great to have you back again. If you're new to our Sabbath School lessons, let me say how happy we are that you've joined us. Uh, we hope you become regular viewers and fellow students. Now, we'd like to get to know you and where you're watching this video from. You can let us know this as well as what you think of our program by emailing us at reachoutforfood at gmail.com. I want to thank the Lord for bringing us back to this special time, uh, Friday evening, when we can gather with our Sabbath school family to worship and study God's Word together. Sabbath is always a blessing, and we're looking forward to the rest and recharging of our spiritual batteries uh, this weekend. Uh, this evening, we are very happy to see Carrie and Alfredo Granados. Carrie is one of our teachers. Carrie, how are, how's your week been? Less. Oh. It's been a wonderful week, and I'm very happy that Sabbath is here. Oh, yes. Alfredo, how about you? You know what? It was a good week, and uh, but you know what? I, I look forward to Friday evening and Sabbath, and so it's it's a welcome sight, and I'm, I'm glad that it's here. Praise God. Praise God. Well, we're always happy to see our panel of teachers who are prepared to lead us in this week's studies, and so we are going to the birthplace of Francis Scott Key in Keymore, Maryland, to greet Harold Green. Harold, how are you doing? I'm doing quite well. Yeah. Uh, things progressing there with your hip? It's going quite well. Uh, it was a busy week here. Um, 
since I still do support with payrolls, the end of January is, is very payroll focused. So, so you're, you're, you're continuing to enjoy your, uh, the retirement then <laughs> oh of course <laughs> the retirement just means busy in, in all kinds of things absolutely absolutely <clears throat> well good luck with you're that you're kind of like faux retired faux retired <laughs> <laughs> got <it>. yeah <laughs> all right well we're going to head down to murphy north carolina to the judge uh, rudy beta jr rudy how are things going uh, with the young pro well, I can tell you that uh, today was a today was a little celebration um, in our house because um, our uh, Labrador Retriever um, Titus uh, this was his second birthday today, and and so um, and 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 we can tell you um, now that we've been through the experience of having a Labrador Retriever. We were warned that um, it takes two years for them to to grow up and to mature and and to become kind of normal, and <laughs> and, and all that is true. Good. It has taken two years for him, but but now he's finally maturing and and becoming more more normal. Uh, but anyway, we we celebrated his birthday with him today. Great. Give him a cake. Well, actually, it was a cake, but it was a, a a little cake that you can chew. It's not it's it's not a real cake, but it looked, it looked like a cake, and he liked he liked playing with it. So, awesome. Well, our first segment is Rudy's what we're going to call Rudy's mailbox, where he presents emails and comments from uh, those watching this lesson uh, uh, study around the world. Uh, so, Rudy, do you have anything for us? I have a couple of them. Um, Gail Wagner is a frequent um, watcher of our program, uh, and and she makes comments fairly regularly. Uh, and and she um, she just uh, was complimentary as usual, uh, and how much she uh, regularly watches and enjoys our, our broadcasts. Like that. And then Emmeline Janot, which I'm, I think I'm. I may be not pronouncing that last name correctly, maybe Jano. Uh, and, and you can help me figure this one out. She says that she's watching us from FSM. And I couldn't figure out what country FSM is. Can anybody come up with an idea about that? Just the initials FSM. F is in Frank. Yeah. Federated States of Micronesia. Oh, there we go. There we go. Thank you. Uh, so that's over in the Pacific, uh, in the South Pacific, wow. uh, where she is on the other side of the world. Well, it was either going to be that or the Fortuna Silver Mines. <laughs> yeah, I'll, vote, I'll vote for the first one I think so <laughs> I think Carrie for the win on that one Don <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's those are our comments for the week but but you know we we've received a lot of a lot of comments from from a lot of different places around the world um, we like it we yeah like we it. like that we, we like, like that. to hear from all of you that's great Okay, so Rudy, uh, you're going to be starting off our lesson study as usual. The ball is officially in your court. Okay, let's uh, let's start off with a prayer. Let's bow our heads together, uh, Father. We ask your blessing upon this this uh, study time we now have together uh, on this Friday evening. Um, we this is a special time. We we always uh, enjoy. Uh, studying the scriptures and the lessons that are here. And, and so we ask your blessing upon this meeting. We ask for the help and presence of the Holy Spirit as we study to give us full understanding uh, of this lesson. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So our, our, as Don introduced us, um, we're the... We're studying about storing up 
treasure in heaven. And, and so uh, we all would like to do that, but how do we do that? Um, and, and so a, a good place to start would be what the scriptures tell us. And we're actually going to examine some life experiences from the patriarchs uh, way back in the Old Testament. And because they did that. And, and so, but how did they do it? Uh, what was involved in, in them storing up treasure in heaven? So let's look at uh, these experiences. And the first one is from the life of Noah, uh, a very ancient patriarch. Um, and and it, it involves the time leading up to the flood. And, and we... Genesis uh, 6 and 7 uh, teach us that there was a flood which destroyed the, in, the entire world uh, and all life on the world except for uh, eight people. And, and so we're not going to look at the story of the flood, but we're going to look at the events leading up to it and, and how that affected the life of Noah. So I invite you to turn with me to, to Genesis 6. And uh, we're going to look at some verses here. Uh, verses 5 and 6 tell us that the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And I'm looking at Matthew 24, 38, where he warns us that for as... It, for as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. So there is a parallel. This is ancient stuff in the flood, but, it, but there's a parallel with our time uh, as well. And, and then continuing with the story of Noah here, it says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Well, I thought grace was a New Testament concept. What's grace doing in, in the Old Testament? Uh, but the same but, God. The same God. And, and apparently grace was extended to the people of that day as well as the people of our day. In fact, um, Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 7, I just want to turn there quickly. Says, by faith, Noah, being warned by God about things not yet seen, in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his household by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. So according to that, righteousness by faith existed in the Old Testament. And we say, well, that's a New Testament concept. Well, apparently it was not just new. It was existing in the ancient times and and he found grace and he was saved by faith uh, according to hebrews and and so what if, if you read on here what what god god gave noah instructions to build an ark and uh the, the flood was coming was which was going to destroy the earth and and so uh for the, for, the, for the 120 years leading up to the flood, he was to build the ark and he was to warn the people. That was his God-assigned task. So would, would you say that Noah's life was disrupted? Immediately, it was turned yes. upside down. Was that, was that a major disruption? Yes. 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 Did, did he sacrifice the pleasures of sin 
for a season. He didn't have time. Right. And, and so um, would, would you say then that he was storing up treasure in heaven by making that sacrifice? Yes. 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 I mean, uh, he could have been doing other things that, that maybe he would have enjoyed more. Uh, I mean, his whole life was disrupted. But on the other hand, his work was a blessing because it kept him from those worldly things as the things that God puts in front of us. Good point. Yeah. But I also, but I, I also think that Noah was experiencing that before and staying away from those sins of the world because of his faith and that he found grace in God. Exactly. Know? Exactly. So, That's a testimony, isn't it, uh, Alfredo, about him? Yes. Uh, you know, while, while everybody else was carrying on, he was still being faithful to God, even before God asked him to build this, this ark. So, so here's, here's, the, here's the question for us. Is it time for us to get into the ark of safety? Yes. Because perilous times are ahead. And we don't have time. Noah didn't have time to do anything but to get ready for that. And I don't think we have time to, to do anything other than to get ready for that time. I mean, that should be the focus of our lives. And so if, if Noah laid up treasure in heaven by doing those things, then we can likewise lay up treasure in heaven by focusing upon preparing for the great events that lie ahead of us. And, and so the next story we have is about Abram and, and just turning over a few pages here in Genesis to chapter 12. Um, and we're just going to look at three verses. We've been, we've talked about Abram before uh, uh, several times, actually, but we're just going to look at uh, briefly uh, something that happened in his life. And in the first three verses, um, Carrie, of chapter 12, there's a conversation here. Well, actually, it's, it's one-sided, but, but read what the Lord told him in, in, in verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show, I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So now I want us to consider uh, if, if we were to look at his, his situation, this instruction came from the Lord to get out of his country. Uh, he was living in, in Ur of the Chaldees, which was a highly developed civilization of that time. And, and, and he would have had, and he was rich. He had a high standard of living uh, there, highly educated. And, and so um, now the Lord is telling him to, to just abandon his, his family, his relatives, his country, and go to a place that he does not know. On a, based on a promise. So would you say that this was a life-changing event for Abram and his family? Very much. Definitely. Disrupted. I mean, just as Noah was, Abram is disrupted here. Um, and, and Hebrews, again, talks about this. Um if you look at Hebrews 11, turn with me again back to Hebrews 11. And uh, let's look at some verses here, Alfredo. If you would read uh, verses 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 for us. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Wait, and wait, wait. Oh. Hebrew, 
He, I'm he, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. I'm sorry about that. Hebrews, Hebrews. 11. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Hebrews 11. Abraham, when he... I, All right, I got one. it. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. So, uh, uh, yeah, so read, read, 11, read 12 and 13 for us. Okay. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So, so this is such an important verse, this verse 13, mm -hmm. because, because Promises were made to Abra Abraham, to Abram, who became Abraham, and and to Isaac, and to Jacob. If you if you go through Genesis about a promised land, about a nation that they would they would inherit this land and occupy this land, and and their their uh, they would be fathers of, of a great nation but in their lifetimes all three of those patriarchs in their lifetimes did that happen no oh. no it did not happen the promises that were made were not literally fulfilled in their lifetimes and and so but but what's amazing what verse 13 tells us that died in the faith without receiving the promises, but their faith was still strong in the promises. And, and so, um, as, as they were, as they were, we also are strangers and exiles in a strange land. This earth, this earth is a strange land. This is not our home. And so we're exiles and strangers here. And, and we, we have faith in promises that are in Scripture, that, that God has promised us. Uh, he's promised us eternal life. He's promised us time in heaven. He's promised us the creation of a new earth. These are promises somewhat like the promises they had, but but. Perhaps in our lifetime we will die and never receive those promises. Rudy, uh, could, could I bring a, a point out a, a thought out of verse 13 that we you just read? Uh -huh. As you said, these all died in faith, not having received the promises. But the next phrase is very interesting. But having seen them, they could actually see the promises. They could see it, the fulfillment. Uh, having seen them afar off, were assured of them. So they heard the promise. They 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 uh, it, uh, took it into their life. The promise is so much that they could actually see the fulfillment. And and can't we do the same thing? That's the point. Is that's uh, exactly. We have so many promises of eternal life. I mean, in my mind's eye, Harold. In my mind's eye, I can see those things. Sure. And, and I'm just just reading the scriptures about them. I can, I can visualize them in my mind, and and so uh, yeah, and and, and so uh, this not this is not empty faith. No, in some some fairy tale that that may or may not exist. These things are are a reality, and and so uh, as they did, I I pray that that my faith will stay strong. And 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 uh, 
that I will receive those promises uh, someday. You know, and, and these folks like Abraham and Noah, you know, they had a relationship with God. And up to this point, God had kept all his promises that he had made to them. So why would they doubt of the promises of, of afar? And so, you know, that's, you know, he, he's, he's been, God has been faithful to them as well and, and keeping his promises. So they, they had no doubt that, that his promises were going to be true. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to look at another story in, in the life of Abraham. Um, and, and when, when he left, if you go to just the next chapter, um, chapter 13, when, when they left Ur of the Chaldees, Abraham took his, his belongings, his flocks, his family with him. But, but Lot, his nephew, also went with him, mm -hmm. uh, accompanied him. And, and so um, chapter 13 talks about Lot's presence with him. And, and so if we look here at 13, uh, what happened is that Lot's possessions were great, as well as Abraham's possessions. They both had large flocks, herds of animals. They were rich. And, and, and so it, it became, it reached a point where there was strife among them, uh, among their servants, among their herdsmen, uh, disputes about whose livestock would graze where. And, and so this was creating contention. And so Abram realized that they needed to separate. And, and so he suggests to Lot that they do that. Uh, but but look, at, look at what he says to Lot, Don. If you read uh, verses 9 through 12 for us about this discussion that he had with Lot. Uh, beginning with uh, verse 9, is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plains of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you go towards Zoar. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east and they separated from each other. You want me to do 12 as well? Uh, through, through, verse, uh, thir, through, through, through verse 12, yeah. Okay. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. Okay, so let's talk about this. Um, what, what goes on here between these two? Um, Abram, uh, I mean, he's the leader. I mean, he was the one that, that God sent out and, and Lot was simply going along, uh, with him. And, and so wouldn't you say that rightfully it would have been Abram's choice about where he was to settle and then Lot would take whatever he didn't choose. I mean, is that a correct statement? I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. That would be the normal expectation. So, yeah. so would you say that, that Abram displayed a generosity of spirit here, a nobility of mind and character um, by, by this, this offer he made to Lot? Or he was wise enough to stay away from those cities. But I mean, I mean, this this was not a noble thing that he did by by offering the choice to Lot. <clears throat> because if Lot had chosen to go to the mountains, then then he would have gone to the plain. I mean, it was it was Lot's choice. 
So, I mean, he didn't really, I mean, he, he may have assumed that Lot would choose the, the fertile valley, but, but he didn't know that. And, and so Lot, uh, less noble than his uncle, uh, proceeded immediately to take advantage of this offer. And he chose what, what, what appeared to be the best property, the fertile valley where his flocks would, would thrive. And, and uh, which was, it says, I mean, it describes it here. It was well watered everywhere, uh, like a garden. And, and so he chooses that. And, and so this is a decision that he would later regret. Uh, and so while uh, his uncle was noble, Lot was not. And he made a very bad decision. And, and if we were to, to read on the rest of the, the chapter and into chapter 14 and, and so on, we would learn about uh, the, the destruction of, of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, by the Lord and, and uh, how Lot and his, and his daughters were, were barely saved out of that. Um, and, and so Abram continued to store up treasure in heaven and, and Lot did not, and, and reap the consequences of that. So what a contrast. So that, that covers uh, my, my part of the lesson. And so is it Carrie that's going to take over the next part? I'm going to try, sir. Okay. Um, so we are, for Wednesday, we're going to be talking about Jacob. And... I kind of took it from a little bit different perspective, um, trying to look at the holistic story uh, and basically the spiritual lessons that we can all learn. And ironically enough, I, I really drew a lot of parallels between Abram and Sarah, uh, for example, not, not believing in faith. They believed in God but they wanted things in kind of at their own pace. Um, Sarah told Abraham, look, I'm, I'm too old to have a child. Go to Hagar, my, my, my woman servant. And uh, even though we've made all of these mistakes, um, Noah was not always a righteous man, but he had a good heart. He was pure for his love for God. Uh, Abraham had a child with Hagar. All of these men did deceptive and less than worthy on surface level things, but they had, they were true in their hearts to God and they were very earnest in their devotion to God. And God always blessed them, even though they had made mistakes. So that that's kind of where I went with it a little bit. Um, Jacob, he received his birthright by lying to his father. Um, and he, he did not trust in God's promises and he, he couldn't wait for things. And, um, you read one of the verses that I was going to use. And I want to say it was Hebrews 11, 13, but basically we just, we can't always make things happen in our time. Sometimes we just have to wait. Abraham was promised descendants as numerous as the stars. In his lifetime, he was not going to see those, but he saw the future of what it could be if he would have, if he would just wait. And that's kind of where I took things. And that's what I got from the lesson. Um, Alfredo, can you read Genesis 49, 29 through 33? Genesis 49? Yep. Yes, sir. Four, 29 through 33. 29, 29 okay. Yep. When he charged them and, and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people, bury me with the, my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, 
which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron the Hittite for a possession of a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. So Jacob had fought with God. And during all of this time, he was, you know, he fought all night long. And in the morning, when he went and he asked, what is your name? And that's when he received the name Peril. Pen, how do you pronounce it, Alfredo? Penal. Which means face of God. So at that point, God had changed Jacob's name to Israel because he fought all night all with God. And I think the important lesson here is that he, he left everything behind. And now he was righteous and he could be buried with his family. Um, and again, self-surrender. One of the questions was um, that Jacob no longer had any holdings in Canaan. What instructions did he give his sons regarding his burial who were also buried in the cave? And why do you think Jacob made this request? And I think what it is is that he, he wants to be buried with his fathers in the field. He, he wanted to get back to who he could, who he ended up being because he gave away all of his treasures. He gave away everything and he fought and he became righteous again. And the bigger moral of the story is that we have repentance. As long as you're earnest and your repentance, God will continue to give us everything that we've asked we're praying for but we have to make sure that it's number one what we truly desire in our heart and what is best for us and we have to look at the big picture not everything is instantaneous with us you know god works in his own time in his own way and i think unfortunately all of us kind of suffer in the fact that we want everything instantaneous and it's not that way. That's not what God teaches us. So, Carrie, I was, I was, you know, I, as I was reading about this cave, the, mm -hmm. cave, the cave of Machpelah, um, I was thinking, I was just thinking about the time of the second coming of our Lord and, and of the resurrection of the saints that will happen at that time. And, and what, what, just thinking, what would it be like in the confines of that cave when all those, all those saved, all those saints of the Lord come forth to everlasting life. And, and uh, it's been so long since they, since they were together, since they saw each other, since they knew each other, and, and here they are now raised together, Abraham and Sarah and, and Jacob and Leah and Isaac and Rebecca, all raised together um, to meet the Lord. And let's not forget yeah. Joseph. Yeah. Joseph was brought back with the children of Israel specifically to be buried there. Yeah. So Joseph as well. Just think about, about I mean, just just to be in that cave and to be able to witness that, how, what a wonderful thing that would be. Amen. You know, one of the things and Alfredo and I have had numerous discussions about this. So, you know, in the second coming, you know, I, I pray that I will, I, I will be there. Definitely. I hope my family is, we pray for my friends and our family every day, but we've always talked about, you know, how would it feel to be Stephen? You know, Stephen's going to be up there, I'm sure. And then Saul, Paul, <laughs> Saul who became Paul. Last thing that he thought of was this man stoning me to death. Yep. 
And now all of a sudden I am breaking bread with him. I mean, imagine that conversation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it, there will be some reconciliations that will take place in heaven. Uh, hey. Yeah. And, and, and some wonderful conversations and, and some introductions. Just take, take, take it to the, the, to the next step as they, as they talk together. Stephen and Paul, and, and Stephen finds out that Paul became uh, an apostle and, and a, a missionary to the Gentiles. He he took he took the message that Stephen was given to the to to uh, greater heights than than, yep. than than Stephen probably ever could have, and so they're going to rejoice together. Uh, but but you're right. There's going to be a a a it seemed like a, a, a transition point. Yeah, that, that's when we're talking about, you know, even this lesson study about his burial. He, they at least know, you know, these are our families. The, the last descendant to die would obviously remember the previous ones. But you have all of them and it's such a magnificent thought of everybody being there and just coming back together, it, it's awe-inspiring. But then you look at the flip side of all of the other things that have happened in the Bible, you know, Stephen and Saul back then. Those are the conversations that you really want to go. How, how, how do you wrap your head around that? From the time that you were stoned to all the amazing things that have happened, even we're today's date is february 3rd 2023 imagine all of the things that have happened the gospel is spreading everywhere this this message is really is reaching countries beyond our normal reach that's what we have to look forward to and that's one of the things that our our sabbath school lesson teaches us every day Live beyond where you are and and just keep in mind that these are all, this is what God wants to happen. Reaching out, seeing beyond what you can see with your own two eyes. That's what it's all about. I think the, the burial place also can take us back to the Hebrews verse that we were talking about, where they saw the fulfillment of, uh, through the promise, and and so, as they came to the end of their life, they wanted to be back there in 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 the promised land. You know, Jacob was was in Egypt when he was getting ready to die, and so he he asked them, "Take please take me back." He wanted to be right there. They, they were, uh, and that's that was really the only piece of property that the family uh, owned. In the promised land, uh, and so so they wanted to be uh, physically uh, uh, part of part of the of the family plot. Yeah, Joseph actually he didn't ask them to do it. He said, "You will do this." <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he he was approaching things from a, a from a, <laughs> a, 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 a the leadership of of, of Egypt <laughs> standpoint. <laughs> There is no question. You will do it. That brings you, Mr. Harold. Please and thank you. All right. Well, we've been we've been looking at at these these patriarchs and 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 before I before I talk about Moses, I, I'd like us to try to to um, sort of boil these stories down to to the to the lesson. Remember, we started out by 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 uh, reading uh, Don Don read a portion of Matthew six. I'd like us to go there and look at Matthew six again. Um, uh, starting with uh, nineteen to twenty one. So we we hear have here Jesus uh, preaching, teaching the the people. He says here, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth 
where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So how do these stories of, of Noah, of Abraham, of Jacob, of Lot, where do we see the, the, the actual uh, application of, of laying up treasures in heaven? Uh, what kinds of things did they do? I, I think we want to, I, I, I know we, we talked about them, but let's, let's, let's see how, what we can come up with. They trusted in God. They well, trusted. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Yes, they trusted because all of them had were living a comfortable lifestyle, but God had asked them to do these things that were out of their norm and took them out of their comfort zone. Okay, it's very, we, we, Rudy pointed that out specifically with, with Noah and, and Abraham. Uh, you know, they, they, they were, and, and their, their lives were turned upside down, but they, they trusted God, as Carrie said, and, and obeyed. All right. Anything yeah. else that they did? Um, I wrote down that self surrendered all of their possessions and everything else. I just self surrendered. Okay. Just come to you raw. They 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 dedicated everything their time, their 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 possessions, uh, and if you uh, you know uh, building of the ark could not have been been a, a, an inexpensive a proposition. I have no idea what what the economy was like, but uh, Noah invested a lot of finances. He invested a lot of time. Uh, uh, so yes, the, the full surrender uh, was was part of part of it. And anything else comes to your mind? I think. Well, I think they all. I think. Oh, go ahead, Carrie. Go ahead, Carrie. I think you started. Go ahead. Um, one of the last points that I had written down was that all of these men did have things in their past that they may or may not have. They had uh, repented for anything that they had done, and their sins at that point were pardoned, and they became these these pa our patriarchs. Okay, they, they weren't perfect men, were they? No, they were not perfect. We, we, and, and the Bible uh, lays out some of their foibles, um, but yet they they trusted God. They came back to God. They repented, um, and God was able to bless them for it. Uh, but they. So the point, the point I'm trying to 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 see here, and and help help us to to get as we continue looking at these uh, patriarchs, um, is is that uh, it wasn't just a financial treasure that 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 w they invested in heaven. You know, typically we think when we read Matthew 6, we think of, of where, where, where we put our money, where our treasure is there, our heart will be always also. I think that's, that's financial. But there's other ways to invest in, in God in, in heaven, is there? And, and, and those are the things that we've been talking about and, and, and the lessons that we can, can learn. Um, I, uh, and so that brings us to the story of, of, of Moses. Uh, Moses, uh, we, we, we have the story of, of him being born in, in Exodus 2. And, and I invite anyone to, to, to read through the, the miracle story of, of Moses. It's, it, we, we love to share the story of Moses with our children because it, it's, it's so, uh, uh, such a wonderful miracle of him living where where the 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 Jewish nation the they are the the God's people children of Israel or have uh they're in in slavery and and um and and the there there's a, a a death decree on 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 young baby boys uh and and a way to control the population uh, their po population and that's what Moses was born into. But yet God sees fit to to 
to save his life. And almost one of the things that I love about the stories that God we read in the Bible is we see God having a sense of humor as well as creativity. Because who is the last person that we would think and, and we would come up with to save the life of, 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 of Moses, but yet the, the, the Pharaoh's daughter? Uh, it just it, it's, it's all amazing. And, and, and then, then to turn it around and, and have the Pharaoh's daughter ask Moses' mother to actually raise him and, and, and pay her to do that for her. Uh, well, God, God has, has a way of turning the, the, the Satan's um, destructive ways around and, 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 and in a way that is amazing. We see that. So with, with that story, that puts Moses in, in, the, in, the, um, in the palace. He grows up after, after being raised. And, and I don't want to move past the, the fact that Moses' mother uh, had only 12 years to, to, to teach him uh, about God and about who he was as, as a children of, of them and, and Isaac and Jacob and, 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 and the blessings of God and, and, and the God as a creator. Because when he hits the, the, the palace and he, and he goes into, he's educated with, with all of the education of the, that Egypt had to offer, the best of everything. Um, what, what a contrast uh, that, that he went through in his life. But then we come uh, and we go back in, in the story to, to, to Hebrews as we, we look at, we've been looking at the, these others and, and Hebrews 11, 24 to 29. John, would you read that for me? Let me grab it here real quick. Hebrews 11, 24 through 29. Yes, sir. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. So that summarizes the story of the decision so we can look and, and see, that, you know, Moses uh, had all of the the possibilities before him, uh, uh, beyond our imagination even, uh, to 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 be uh, royalty in Egypt, to 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 take have all the advantages that that Egypt had to had to to to, to give and to offer. Um, uh, at that time, Egypt was one of the greatest powers in the ancient world. Uh, but yet, uh, Moses remembered the things that he had learned from the knee of his mother uh, and and chose not to, 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 do, to go that way. Um, you know, uh, in book education, Mrs. White writes, Moses was offered uh, the palace of the pharaohs and the monarch's throne. But the simple pleasures that make men forget God were in, in those lordly courts. And he chose instead the durable riches and righteousness. Proverbs 8:18. 8, the greatness of Egypt is in the dust. Its power and civilization have passed away. But the work of Moses can never perish. The great principles of righteousness which he lived to establish are eternal. And so that, that is, is an um, the amazing part of the choice. So how did Moses invest treasures in, in heaven? Well, he forsook everything that he could have had 
and and decided to follow uh, basically Christ. Okay, so so there's there's another. Uh, uh, go ahead, Alfredo. You had something to add. Well, wasn't Moses after he left Egypt? You know, then he came and he got married, right? And he was living a pretty good life then. And then God asked him, okay, look, you got to get out of your comfort zone. And I want you to go back to Egypt and get my people out. Yeah, and and, and Moses was a, a little um, not anxious to go back. Yes. <laughs> but but he did. But he did. Um, so... Um, so as far as Don, Don, you were saying that, that Moses forsook Egypt. He gave up all the riches and power and glory, earthly glory, that he was his right there. It was already in his hand. Okay. And and actually, he, he had, in a sense, made that decision before being going off uh, because he, he, he went in and, 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 and defended one of the, one of the, Egypt, the slaves. One of his brothers, you know, at that point, he he had already made that decision, hadn't he? But he was trying to do it on his terms, mm -hmm. his way. And uh, didn't work out so well for him. But but then, uh, as, as, as Alfredo was pointing out, he, he goes off and um, and he he was living a comfortable life, it seems. And from from what we read in the Bible, but God then turned his life upside down and then said, it's not, it's time to do it my way now. Yeah. And Moses you know, uh, 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 did obey and follow through. So, um, are all the stories that uh, the, uh, of, of putting um, your treasures in heaven, uh, or do they all come from the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. No, we we have examples in the New Testament too, but th there's there's one that I'd like us to to look at because um, it, it it is a little different than the others. Look, turn to Mark ten twenty one. Mark ten twenty one. Terry, if you could read that for us. Mark right. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Okay. So just as a reminder of, of the story, uh, this rich young ruler comes to Jesus and, and he's saying, uh, uh, what what can I do to have eternal life? And Jesus says, you obey the commandments. And he says, I've done that. I've done it all. And so, and so then Jesus cut, says to them, one thing you lack as you read. And what was that? Sell everything you have and follow me. To give yeah, it to the poor. Give it to the poor. Um, so... And it very clearly then relates the doing that to putting treasure in heaven. What is it that puts the treasure in heaven for this guy if he had followed through? Was it was it the giving money to the poor? I believe it was following Christ and, and the advice to sell what you had took the anchor away that would have kept him from truly doing that. Okay. Gary, did you have something to add to that? It's trust, trust, and, and obedience. And mm -hmm. and where where was was where was the rich man, rich young ruler's heart? It, it, it was in his mind. to see a one foot in, one foot out. I need to have a backup plan. Here's my backup plan. Yeah, I'm going to obey the I'm going to obey the commandments, but I but I but I'm going to depend on my riches. Mm -hmm. And 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 Jesus saw through it, so he. So again, that we don't have example of, of, of Jesus telling uh, others to go sell everything that he had. Uh, what about Zacchaeus? Did he did he tell him to do that? Zacchaeus was rich. I think Zacchaeus was already 
planning to do that. Yeah, I think didn't yeah. he have it already said here? He gave it up willingly, I thought. So his conversion, he, from his conversion, he, he right. made that decision. On his not own. only did he give back what he had taken, he, I think he gave back more than he, he gave had taken. More, yeah, right. So we have examples of people in the New Testament and, and doing things and and, tie, and and what I'm trying to, to help us see is that it's not just the giving of the money, but it's the giving of the heart. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the obedience, the trust uh, of following through and, and uh, so many things. Um, and we need to remember, what is it that we're giving for? Uh, you know, uh, the investment in, in heaven it gives us uh, the right to, to to the to eternal life, um, and uh, and look at at First Corinthians two nine. Alfredo, could you look at that? First uh, Corinthians two nine. First Corinthians two nine. All right. But as it is written. I hath not seen nor nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So when we talk about investing and putting our treasures in heaven, we can't even imagine, as what you just read, Alfredo, we can't even imagine the rewards that go along with it, for the eternal life, the spending eternal life with, with, with Jesus. Uh, and 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 the other blessings that, that go with it, um, but uh, so this is the sort of the uh, max, the major investment of, of of our life is to invest in 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 heaven, and that is what this lesson is about. It's it's our money, our time, our heart, our trust, our our, our obedience. All of this. Is, is investing and 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 being willing to as Abraham and 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 um, and Moses and 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 uh, the others many times God asks us to get outside of our comfort zone and move and do what He's asking us to do and and uh, and that is is investing in heaven you know um, patriarchs and prophets uh, we have a, a a quote here from uh, page 246, Moses had been instructed in regard to the final reward to be given to the humble and obedient servants of God, and worldly gains sank to its proper insignificance in comparison. He looked beyond the gorgeous palace, beyond a monarch's crown, to the high honors that will be bestowed on the saints of the Most High in a kingdom untainted by sin. He saw by faith an imperishable crown that the king of heaven would place on the brow of the overcomer. His, this faith led him to turn away from the lordly ones of earth and to join the humble, poor, despised nation that had chosen to obey God rather than to serve sin. And that is my prayer that each one of us can keep our eyes focused on, on the reward that God has promised. Um, and, and, and when we compare what we give up or, or what we invest compared to the rewards uh we we uh it, 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 there is no comparison god's the reward is so much more than what we give up and so let's let's bow our heads and ask the lord to to strengthen us and guide us dear heavenly father we come to you thanking you for your words we can go back and see the, for learn lessons from your patriarchs that 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 were obedient, that grew and and and, and by faith followed you, uh, and many times to 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 very tr through troublesome times. But we can see their growth. And Father, we, we can bring that into our life and 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 see the promises that you give us. We can the promise of eternal life, the promise of, of being with us. And, and taking care of us and we we ask that you will uh, come and be with us now and strengthen us help help our unbelief at times we, that we can grow and become more more uh, uh, dependent on you and follow you and we can share with those that we meet and we thank you for for it all because we all look forward to spending eternity with you 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank, uh, you know, the Lord for bringing us through this lesson uh, without any large technological hiccups. <laughs> And I want to thank all of you for joining our lesson study this evening. Uh, we certainly pray you will get a blessing as you study the lesson this week and hope that you invite somebody to study with you. Now, if you'd like to see past lesson study videos and be able to watch each week's video as they come out, just go to our YouTube channel, Food for the Heart and Nourishment for the Soul, and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because that lets us know that you're actually there watching. And while you're at it, bookmark the page so you can check on it anytime you want. Now, if you don't have access to an adult Sabbath school quarterly, just drop by your nearest Seventh-day Adventist church in Westminster, Maryland. It's the Westminster Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, and in uh, in Fannin County, Georgia, uh, Rudy? Uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church of Fannin County. Yeah, there you go. You're going to see the addresses for both of those in the closing trailer. Or if you aren't close to an Adventist church, you can go online uh, to ssnet.org forward slash study guides. You can see that right here. That address is right here to download a copy or you can and you can study online. Uh, I like to do that myself. Now, please, if you have a chance, drop us a line. Let us know what you think about these classes and definitely uh, you know, uh, tell us, uh, you know, where you're watching these uh, lessons from, because that, we get a kick out of that. And it lets us know, uh, you know, uh, where, uh, you know, this outreach is, is going to. Now, uh, you may decide, hey, I'd like to join this uh, class live on Friday evenings. If so, just contact us at reachoutforfood at gmail.com. That's right here. And we'll send you a Zoom invitation, tell you everything you need to know. Until then, please pray for this program. Um, your prayers uh, will bring blessings to our reach, and they already have, and open doors to some who may not know our Savior. Please have a safe and blessed Sabbath. We'll see you again next week, and don't forget, God loves you. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>